friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another garden update and a roof update so you can see how it's coming along. Um, I'm going to try to make this quick and I got to do it before the rains come because they're coming again today, but at least for only a couple of days. This has been a, a cooler than usual summer for us. I mean, even for our area. So anyway, let's get started and I'll show you what I got going on. All right, well, you can see here lots of roofing stuff all over the place. And so unfortunately it kind of detracts from the beauty of my front yard garden but look at that roof come along pat's been doing quite a bit of this by himself we did have a guy a friend of ours that came over he knows a lot about metal roofing and laying it he came over and helped him for a day i think two days actually and so that was really really nice and uh it's he's almost done as far as laying the roofing he's just got like a little corner i think right up there is the only corner he has left to do and then there's you know putting the gutters back on and some other little things you know stuff that needs to happen around the chimney and so on and so forth and we'll have videos on that um patrick did shoot quite a bit but it's going to take a long time before we can get them all sorted out and edited and actually put into a put into a you know where people can watch it and maybe learn from so that might not even happen until next year all right so on to the gardeny stuff so over here uh these all these tomatillos you see growing are all the ones that uh just reseeded from last year i've actually had to thin a whole bunch of them out because i had tons of them coming up and so they're getting fruit and this fever few is finishing up now this is the one that had the multi uh just a several layers of petals unlike the ones that have usually one up to two layers this has three to four and so i've been saving the seeds i'm going to come out here and cut this these two and these will go up on my store for this next year the fever few seeds that are currently on my store are from last year they're not they're not this same one here and then this here i've been recently learning about though i've been pulling it up it's pretty much considered a weed it does have medicinal purposes and is edible I actually tasted taste of the leaf and the flowers today because that's the parts that are edible and it's actually be really good in salad very mild flavor so anyway the sorghum and the amaranth i planted a couple weeks ago i transplanted is starting to take off now looking really good especially that amaranth so those amaranth leaves are edible. They're, they're a nice mild flavor as well, go really good in salad and are very good for you. And then those down there are some ground cherries. The zucchini, this is my dwarf peach. Zucchini's doing really good as zucchini tends to do. And this is about three feet tall, these plants, and uh, at the tallest, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, getting lots of zucchini, making all kinds of things. If you haven't seen my what to do with all that zucchini or whatever I called it, uh, I'll go ahead and link to that up in the corner. And also I'll be starting to, when I remember, to put links to videos uh, in the description box to make it easier for people using their smartphones. So here are the, uh, the kohlrabi I keep forgetting to talk about. And uh, it's uh, again new to me this year. I've never even tried kohlrabi. I don't even know what it tastes like. I, I have this feeling though I'm gonna really like it. Got a couple more ground cherries. Uh, that is some um, bee balm. And then that's that, that little sprig of lemon balm that I took from the other plant and put up here. That's what it looks like now. And I've actually cut quite a bit off of it. It's doing really good. I think it's gonna like it much better out here. So more amaranth. These are those giant mammoth beets that I'm really curious about. So we'll we'll see if I like these. These are doing really good. They're doing better than the other beets. Look how far behind these are. Calendula, that's a daylily, that's edible. My uh, oregano on both sides here and over there are all going to flower. Sage, mint everywhere, uh, marshmallow. And then you can see I moved a, the golden oregano. That was in the back garden. I moved it out here because it was getting too overshadowed by the taller plants. And another golden oregano and most of my nasturtiums my dwarf ones have finished up but this one's actually still giving me some flowers and then here's my little strip of garden so i'm going to be taking this marshmallow plant out at the end of this year and using the roots and because i'm going to save this all for shorter herbs things don't get so big i might keep that marshmallow and that one but i'm going to take this one out too so this is all going to be for thyme uh, the dwarf nasturtiums the calendula the bee balm the rosemary 
all that kind of stuff things that aren't don't get quite so huge but then you know, of course also have my valerian look at this thing look how good it looks it might not be eight feet, feet tall but at least it's a little more manageable down here and i've actually been taking some leaves off here and dehydrating them i'm hoping to save some seeds this year so i haven't been taking all the flowers to dehydrate because uh I want to see if I can save some seeds and try some plants next year. I probably won't be selling the seed on my store until I know I can get a good viable seed off of here. Coming around the corner to the West Herb Garden, my echinacea here is looking really good. This was, um, they don't flower until the second year. So this was from seed that I started last year from the seed I saved from the year before that from my one of my echinacea plants. So there's my rose, catnip, there's some oregano in there, feverfew, the elderberries, yikes, yikes. And this was after pruning it way back. And it just, even no matter how much I cut off these things, they still get twice as big as they were the year before. So lavender, woolly lamb's ear, and I have been saving some flower heads off of these. When they start looking like this, I need to cut it, come out here and cut off some more. Hoping to get enough to put uh, where I can collect some seed for the store this year. Because I didn't have any to put up on the store last year. So oregano, that's my original lemon balm. More lavender. The mojito mint. This is a smaller elderberry. More lamb's ear, more peppermint this is that huckleberry that i it was just doing horribly out back and now it's finally got life on it it's finally after all these years so sage catnip and horseradish here and over there i always walk right by my apple tree and forget to show it so apples are pretty pretty well loaded it's shedded quite a few apples and i've been adding them to my vinegars so they don't fully go to waste. Coming back down to this opposite end, here's the little apple tree that I had in a pot for years. Some of the apples have fallen off and there was a deer in our front yard uh, the other day and it's, you could tell it had been nibbling on the branches. So yeah, but it still looks really good and the apples that are left on there and there's another golden oregano, but the apples that are left on there look, look pretty healthy. All right, up here on the deck, this is that little corner right next to the shop. And I wanted to show you these onions that I started. It's okay, doggy. <laughs> He's upset because Patrick left without him. Uh, he'll be back. Anyway, I just started from some I bought at the store because I wanted some, I didn't have enough green onions that came back from last year. So they're doing, you know, I used up the green onion off it, put the little stubs in there, and I'm getting plenty of green onion off of there. Now right here I had snow peas and the beans growing, but since my snow peas are all finishing up and shading out my uh, beans, I very carefully took the snow peas out of there and then rewrapped the, uh, the beans up here. So these ones are a little farther behind than some of the other ones, I think because the, the snow pea plant was shading it out just way too much, but now it's really starting to grow. And it won't be but a couple more days and I'll have some in fact, this one here is just about ready. In fact, I could pick that one right now. And you can see my grapes here. Grapes are coming along. Let's go over here. It seems like this section over here is the section that always seems to get the most all in one place. Look at that. All in there. And this is with me constantly hacking these things back because they just overtake the deck. So I'm not going to talk about everything in the main garden, but look at my corn. It's almost as tall as me now, but at least that one is. So looking good. I wanted to show you here. I finally got some lemon verbena again. My neighbor gave me a couple of little starts that he had and I, I broke off the tops of them so that they would really branch out and make a lot more. I love lemon verbena. I love the smell and flavor of it better than lemon balm. Okay, noisy. That's kicking bird this time making the noise. Hey, shh. Anyway, you can see that red orac is starting to grow. That one, when the sun shines through it, it's just beautiful. Why do you have to follow me around and make noise? This is the garden huckleberry. This is gonna to be totally, <laughs> grr. This is gonna to be totally new to me this year. These will get almost black, or I think they do turn black. And you don't wanna eat them raw. They're, they're not very, apparently they can be toxic and they're not very flavorful. 
but apparently they make an excellent jam, jelly, and pie. So I thought it was, you know, I, I just thought it was interesting. I'd give it a try. And some of the tomato plants I put out here are doing so-so. I did get a few ripe ones off here so far, but obviously not doing as well as the ones in the greenhouse. Now this, I keep also forgetting to show, probably a bad idea planting it here, but this was, Michelle Justice gave this to me at the homesteading fair that we did, you know, we went to and spoke at back in May. This is the sorrel, and it just has a wonderful, very tart flavor. Now, personally, I don't know if I'd use it in salad myself, but I really like to just come out here and munch on the leaves. I think it's good, but it's gotten huge. She told me, after I put it in the ground, she told me that she keeps hers in a pot. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have done that, but we'll see. Um, I'll probably cut these seeds off because I certainly don't need any more. <laughs> All right, quick look at my bean and pea trellis. It might look a lot thinner, and that's because I pulled out most of the pea plants, except for this one right here at this corner, and then one on the other side over there, because the peas are pretty much done. I've got plenty of peas dehydrated up. Beans are more important to me than the peas, and so I, I needed to get those out because it was slowing down the growth of my beans, and I can tell just since pulling those out a few days ago, these have really been taking off and looking a lot better. I've been getting quite a few beans off already. I've already processed a load of uh, where I got eight pints of the green beans and then I went ahead and canned up some dried beans to go with it. I gotta get out here in a little bit and pick some more beans. I see some there and we'll do, I'll show you the, here's the purple potted beans. So you can see the difference in the color of the plant itself in comparison to the runner beans here. So I do, I have a video coming out, it won't be out for a few weeks, but about these beans, because they're my two favorite ones to grow so far. I've tried several others, but I always come back to these. So in here you can see some of the purple beans. This is the size right here, these will get much bigger, but this, for the purple beans, this is a good size to harvest if you're gonna use it as a green bean. And then for these ones, the runner beans, this is a good size to harvest. Now these will get about three times this size but by that point you're just going to save them for the dry bean so this right here is, a, is good you can go a little bigger than that and they're still pretty good like here's here's some more right here like this one right here i'll definitely get picked today so hopefully in a few days i'll have enough to do another load of beans and one thing i know for sure i'll go ahead and mention that i want to do this next year is this whole i was going to do it this year and then i changed my mind but I'm for sure gonna do it next year, is this whole section back here, um, up to here, because this is my perennial herb section here, uh, one of them. <laughs> this whole section is gonna be just for corn, so I'll put corn over there too, which I forgot to show you. I also have a garden huckleberry growing right there. So I'm really curious about those, we'll see. And then I did, because I was trying to grow the, the other kind of sorghum here, not the broom sorghum, and it didn't do great, I just clean, I cleaned it up. I did actually clean it up originally. There's actually one still right there, but you see how much farther behind it is than the broom sorghum, which is what that is. Yeah, it's not liking it here. So next year, this will be all corn. So anyway, I've just been filling in the gaps here with the with the garden huckleberry, the broom sorghum, with a couple of tomato plants that are just doing so-so. But uh, anyway, the next year, this will all be corn. The, the pea plants I am leaving, like this one here that's in the pot, it's in a pot with it, with my current, one of my currants, I'm just letting go to seed. I do still occasionally come out and uh, and uh, munch on these, but they're kind of to that point where they, even when they're small, they're tough. So they're, they're done. They're just good for seed. So look at this echinacea, how beautiful it is. This is the oldest echinacea I, I currently have in my garden. I had one over there that was older, but I, last year it up and died on me for some reason. So this year, the, these marshmallow plants, these two here, are coming out at the end of this year. So because they're too big now, I mean, when I first put them in here, they were just little guys. Now they're too big. Look how big they are. They got flowers on them. I mean, they're beautiful and I love them, but I've got plenty of marshmallow growing and they're just, they shade out all my stuff over here. And so that's one of the reasons why my yarrow, this is this one's been here for years and years. And it used to be bigger than this. It is filling in more since I've been coming out and harvesting off the flowers and some of the leaves, which I'm gonna take this one and save it for seed. 
Uh, anyway, it's that's why they're not doing so great. And then I have another echinacea I planted here from seed I started this year. And I need, so I need to get all this stuff out so next year it can do good. And then there's a valerian right there. And yes, I do just throw, a lot of times just throw stalks when I'm harvesting them that I don't need. I've got plenty dehydrated or I got too much on the dehydrator already, but I just need to thin it out. I'll just throw them down in the in-between pass there and just let them break down. So it might not look pretty, but uh, I'm just trying to make the most out of it. So this pea plant's going to stay until it's finished, and so will those two back there because they're not harming anything. And that one, you can definitely tell it's finishing up. My squash is finally doing well. I've got a couple of bean plants that are behind the other ones in the main garden, but they're uh, but they're doing okay. They're finally taking off. It, it helped that I finally got the potato, once I got the potato plants out of there. I've got several different squash, I have five different squash plants here, so obviously I won't be saving seeds off of any of these. I just wanted to try them all. The one that's, the ones that are doing the best are the ones I got from my neighbor, and I don't recall what they are. I'm gonna have to ask them, but it's getting plenty of fruit. And so I tried something kind of weird and different, but I tied them up like I did the tomatoes so that they could get up to here since I don't have any kind of thing for them to grab onto along this side but he gave these to me later after I had these in here so I didn't have room and I don't want to plant them back there because they just don't get enough sun the pippin and so the this is the Cherokee tan I haven't had any flowers on it yet but I see some well I see some forming down there this is going to be the orange butternut and I'm really anxious I sure hope I get some fruit on that this year and then over here is the kusha this is the seed that I got from Jen so it's coming along. My beans are doing the best. Look at them. They're going right up over. They've hit the halfway point over the <laughs> over this arch. Those ones have and these ones almost have. So at least I had two. I planted a lot of beans out here and only two made it. Well, there's one more right there, but the chickens keep eating it down to nothing. I walk around this side. So tomatillos. Tomatillos are about four feet tall. These ones on this end are. And so you can see the peas left on this side. And here on here, you can get a better look at that purple. That's what it looks like with the purple flower, the purple potted pole bean. And lavender, and then some more tomatillos. And then, like I said before, all of these tomatillos up to here were self-seeded. These, there's four right in here that are the purple ones I got from Jen. So those are the only ones I started from, you know, started myself this year. So some more beans ready to pick. Not gonna talk much about the tomatoes because I've been doing that a lot, but they've been doing good. I've been getting some ripe ones off of everything now so far. Well, maybe not the purple ones. And I am starting to see on the lemon cucumbers, I'm seeing some young fruit forming. But the main thing I wanna show you, oh, look at my pretty peppers. Look at them, they're so pretty, is this lovely thing. I knew when I walked in this morning that this had opened up. This is my grapefruit. So several months ago, we were we had a grapefruit uh, that we bought from the store and there was a couple of seeds in there that had sprouted. So we decided to save them and put them in pots and sure enough, both of them grew plants. The one's in the house, but this one has flowered. And I knew without even looking at it when I walked in the greenhouse today that it had bloomed because the smell is heavenly. If you've never grown a citrus plant, I mean, to me, even if I never get fruit off this, which I doubt I will, if I can get flowers, I'm happy because the scent, the aroma of the flowers is just, it's so wonderful. I'm sorry, Cody wants in. There's a quick look at my peppers. Okay, now I gotta go out front and show you one more thing. Okay, so I keep forgetting to talk about my little mini deck garden that I've started. I've been moving things out here a little at a time. So the strawberry plants, I've got one more strawberry plant I'm gonna move out here. Um, my pansies are out here are kind of done for now. But um, I've been getting lettuce off of these in pots. And I had some more lettuces in this other pot over here. But the main, I took them out because they were finishing up. The main thing I wanna talk about and show you is this, I keep forgetting. So a while back, Lisa Booker, in remembrance of my mom, which was very sweet of her, had bought me a gift certificate to Baker Creek. 
and so I used it to buy a couple of fig plants. I also got some aronia berries and so I had four. There was two of each. Well, I was sure that I killed them all. But one of the figs came back and I'm just so happy. Man, I was heartbroken when I thought all of them had died. But this one came back. I've been nursing along and it's looking really, really healthy. But I need to get some more soil in here But I, because I had some lettuces in here and they used up a lot of that soil. So I got to get some more added in but uh, because the lettuces just were exploding. I had to keep harvesting these ones just so they wouldn't totally shade out my, my fig. <laughs> All right, well, that's my garden update for this week. And just so you know, in nine days from today or the day that I'm shooting this, so this will probably go up in a couple of days. So in a, right at a week from the time you're seeing this video, uh, my son will be getting married. So it's very unlikely I'll be doing a garden update. My garden updates are the only things I put up like right away. Everything else is out like three to four weeks. And so I'm covered for for quite a while. So uh, you won't be seeing any like recent updates like garden, anything garden related and such. So uh, just keep that in mind. I might only get five videos uh, published next week. It's going to be busy. We've got family coming as, all, as I'm sure you can expect. But anyway it'll be it'll be fun it'll be a fun family time and just i'm so excited to see my son marrying kayla i mean she's a wonderful lady i love her so much so I'll be watching for my next garden update probably in about two weeks thanks for watching take care and god bless